Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Thursday, Jan 18. Coming at you. From Geneva, Switzerland. Got a very, very interesting setup today. We're going to open up uh, with the cryptos because that was fun, wasn't it? 9,080 in Bitcoin. But now, uh, sorry about that, we're 20% higher. Back at 11,250. How y'all doing? Ethereum, same. 770, back at 999. 1,000 bucks Ethereum. The strategy is still the same. Throw absurd bids in. Watch the market panic in a crazy way, saying that crypto mania is over. And then try and trade out of your longs. Probably keep core short at the best average you can. So core tiny short. So, you know, if you bought 100 grand of this, trade out of 80,000 of it. If you bought 10,000 of this, trade out of 8,000 of it. Leave the 20% position on core long. It's our belief that most of those cryptocurrencies will go to zero, but Bitcoin will not. Uh, Ethereum most likely will not. Unless the blockchain is hacked, then all bets are off. But it seems unlikely for now at least, in my limited knowledge about how to hack a blockchain. Anyway, back to uh, our regularly scheduled G7 update. Cable, wow, ripped it at the end of the day yesterday, all the way up to 139.42. Now it's come back. <clears throat> Let's talk about this dollar right now, because the front page of the Wall Street Journal Europe first article, I'm sure you've all read it or you will read it in the coming minutes, Apple to pay big tax bill on foreign cash. Apple's going to pay $38 billion on its overseas cash, bring it all home. Wow, this is inflationary. As soon as this came out, the dollar turned. We saw Euro go from 122.60. Ended up going down to 121.65 last night. We saw cable go from 139.40 to 138.40. We saw dollar yen <laughs> smash up through 111. And we saw yields and bonds. Yields down, bonds higher. Uh, if this is the beginning of a trend and what we're going to do with overseas money, you can't fight this. Uh, it's just too much cash coming back into the United States. So, gonna have to be careful here. And just thinking out loud, what do we like? Kinda looking at dollar Swiss now. We had this low here, 95.74, all the way back up to 96.67. We now have a double top here at 65, and a pivot. This is gonna be grindy and difficult as always but if yields and if you look at the 10-year yield stay at 260 and continue to go higher which they will if repatriation becomes a theme dollar swiss will benefit so dollar swiss today we think the flock is going to start looking at this and, and trading it on the right hand side contrary to the last i don't know six days People are going to be right hand side in dollar Swiss today. Dollar yen, the other sort of carry ish currency. Uh, man, looks constructive. That is bullish engulfing. We traded up to 111.47. Kind of hard to believe. Um, the 200 day is 111.70. Up through that, then this market is going to get caught. I don't see a trade here in dollar yen. Um, but, boy, bearish and go bullish engulfing after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down days. Man, that 
smacks of a turn. Let's look at this intrepid Euro. Same pattern. Bearish engulfing from the highs on the repatriation news. This market is long Euro. And it's long Euro, like securely long Euro. Hard to hard to flip short here, and so I'm not going to do that. We're just going to wait to see this thing below 120.90, which was the big breakup point. If we can get prices down below that, then we will start working on the left-hand side. Um, but uh, this looks like this might be a little bit of a car crash coming. And it's really going to depend on flexibility, but the market's very long euro. And the storyline just changed. The storyline went from U.S. is screwed, Trump sucks, Europe's going to be the more stable, best place to, oh shit, yields are way higher, and here comes all that money back into America. Um, so we'll see which storyline wins. Usually in FX, the storyline that wins is the storyline against what the majority of positions are. So... I'll just leave that to you. We're not touching Euro today. We are looking at this Aussie. Still being our bonnet in the Aussie. This 79.40 level now is, is important. Let's just face it. Um, you know, we had 38 on, I don't know what day was that. Tuesday, Wednesday, we had 40. Yesterday we had 41. I mean, today we had 41 after the employment numbers. Below 79.40, we're sellers of Aussie. We're going to treat this as a break trade. Um, I suggest we take a look at that. Dollar CAD. Holy cow, was that a freaking mess a minute before the number yesterday? Let's have a look at that. Here's the one minute chart. Look at that all the way up to 125.40 on some idiotic stop-loss move. You could tell a lot of participants had left the 124.60 en entries. They raise all the way down to 123.64. We were lucky enough to snatch some dollars at 123.80 and we just traded the volatility there and just dove out of it. We did give some back on the move back down because we're buyers of dollar CAD. But in the end, let's look and see what happened. Just in classic FU foreign exchange, just closed where it opened on a rates day. I mean, come on, can't even, can't even, can't even make this up. Anyway, double bottom now on twenty three sixty four. This is, you know, doji, total indecision on the candlestick. But if you're conservative, you just have, you, you have to wait for 125.40 to trade, give you your signal. Um, but if you're not conservative and you just believe dollar cad's going to go higher, you can just start getting long here and try and trade your way into a good average. We do like... Or I shouldn't say privateer likes. I like dollar cat higher. Um, we'll just have to see. Kind of dovetails with my my Aussie obsession this past couple of days. Uh, I don't want to talk too much here. I think that's about it. Our main focus is dollar Swiss top side, Aussie downside, and we're going to keep an eye on euro and the big dollar, just as a sent as a sentiment indicator. And we will be trading softly out of our crypto lungs. Good luck, guys. Have a good day trading. I'll see you at the New York Open. Ciao.